Hey, we're sitting here at the Open Forum with uh, really kind of the burgeoning media guru now, Chris Como. How you doing, man? How, how many times have y'all done the Open Forum? Eight. Eight years? Yeah. Started out in a bar? Started out in a bar. Yes. What, what, <laughs> well, okay, yeah. What led to it? Yeah, uh, you know, golf instruction can be pretty divisive. People tend to kind of latch on to certain beliefs, whatever, lots of debates. And you go on forums, especially like eight years ago, there so many debates. And then uh, just, it came on one of the forums, um, why don't we do a live version of this? And we turned it into something. And it was not my idea, but, but I was asked to like help moderate and kind of get the people together. So I thought it was such a good idea. I just kind of started recruiting people. The first event we had, I heard Mike say 100 people. I think it was more like 50 the first event. It was in a bar. We had six PhDs at that first event, super raw, people were like drinking, and it was just, it was craziness, but it was, it was, in a lot of ways, it was the sort of the most fun one we've done. Yeah. But it's evolved, and it's become kind of a really cool event. So, to me, what, what itch does it scratch for the instructor? Because I know I talk to a lot of colleagues of ours who come, and they wouldn't miss this, because it's like the first place that they can kind of debate, but there's a couple camps that always come in, and it always makes me think about the client. You know, the, 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 the golfer back home, whether it's an elite player, junior, just a club player, what are they, what are they getting solved here through their instructor being here? Um, okay, well, so I think the instructors, first off, part of the spirit of this is to hear so many different opinions, encourage, you know, debate at some level, more like mm -hmm. just discussion, kind of, we leave the mics open, anybody can come up anytime and ask a question or give a counterpoint. Um, so I think it's very unique to other seminars because of that, mm -hmm. because it's just air quotes, the openness of it. Um, and I think through that dialogue is where, you know, different ideas, different presentations can be stress test a bit. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the students at home are getting a teacher who is going out there, one, not only trying to learn stuff, but not just learn stuff that kind of fits their current sort of paradigm, but like actually challenge themselves and have maybe their perspective of coaching changed or evolved a little bit through that sort of debate. Mm -hmm. And I think from that, the student's just gonna get a you know, better teacher. So when we look at technological and physiological stuff, you, there's so many different camps, all right? And then there's so many different PhD camps, which I, as an outsider, I look at and I go, I don't know if I can understand it because you have different philosophies and you're very ingrained in that and you're very integrated in that. If you were to lay it out into like three different camps, what are they? Is there, or am I misinterpreting? I, I, I don't really think there is. I mean, especially- There's disagreement though, right? Well. So, when you start to get to like the harder stuff, like the harder sciences, like where you start to get to like the physics of things, it's, it's, it seems to be fairly straightforward and all the either phys, the PhD physicists, engineers, biomechanists, the ones that are actually taking the questions mm -hmm. seem to actually have um, a consensus amongst each other. Okay. So, there's allegedly some debates but it's coming from um, a, a camp, whatever you want to put it, where the PhD is not actually communicating with anybody. So it's sort of hard to know. It's an interpretation. It's, well, I, I don't know, right? Okay. I, I just don't know because it's like, the, that's, nothing's actually coming directly from that PhD. So it's, yeah. I can't put words into a PhD's mouth because he's not saying anything. So it's, it's so hard to say if he disagrees or dis, doesn't disagree. So to me, every single PhD who's actually taking questions, taking emails, um, they're, they're, they're kind of converging. Are you, are we seeing a direct impact on the quality of play, the adoption of play, the better movements for our golfers today? I mean, it's probably made you a better instructor. Yeah. Okay. So, what's that tangible, practical outcome that we see there? I mean, I, I think because here's my question: yeah. You got a young instructor who's coming to the game now. It's freaking overwhelming, man. Mm -hmm. Where do you go? Who do you listen to? What do you follow? How do you build your own camp? And that's what I'm kind of saying. Yeah, yeah you li but you don't. You listen to all of them. I, I think this idea of dogma is silly, right? Like, oh, I agree with all, you. All these people, all these teachers who have success, it's like they're having success for a reason. So like, try and figure out why that is. If you're a young instructor, go out there and be like, okay, I know this guy's a busy teacher. People are coming to him. They're coming to him over and over again. Why? Maybe from like the first exposure of instruction, he's saying something a little bit different. Don't be dismissive of it. Go try to figure out why that guy is having the success he is. And do that with anybody who's having success respectively. And I think from there, you start to understand more of like the logic of golf swings as opposed to some sort of rote, I need to teach A, B, and C because this person told me that. And that to me is where an instructor really in a way takes off their training wheels mm. and just kind of like, they're just this dynamic problem solver. And they're tapping into things of like the understanding of the body, maybe a little bit of physics, a little bit of like launch monitor, impact conditions type stuff. 
And these are not anything that's just sort of telling them how to teach. It's just things running in the background and they're just being in that moment with that person, figuring out what that person's goals are and then trying to create a path for that person to get do, those goals. Do you have a, a philosophy of how to take, because I see it as a funnel, right? Got all this information, but I've got to be able to di diagnose and treat and also get to what the client wants. Even tour players. Yeah. I mean, we can give them all kinds of information, but if it's not what they're looking for, they're going to be gone. But that's the, that's the greatness of a coach, yeah. is to know what to introduce and what not to introduce. Yeah, I think that's such a huge part of teaching is, is evaluating the person in front of you. One, what are their goals? Not only what do they say their goals are, but what are their actual goals? And how do those goals relate to the constraints of whatever, their life, their body, whatever? Because, you know, the guy, like let's just say 10 handicap, he's like, oh, you know, I want, I'm a 10 handicap, I want to get to like a two handicap. It's like, okay, cool. Oh, you just had a, you just had a baby? A month ago? Okay. You just got a promotion at work? Okay. Like, you got a busy life, dude. Like, yeah. uh, I don't know if, you know, you're thinking on the front end that you can allocate two hours a day to practicing. Is that really going to happen? Mm. So, in that, you know, different situations where you evaluate them individually, you're trying to come up with a game plan that one is helping a person reach your goals, but is also realistic given the constraints that they have. And then also like that, you know, you start getting into like tour people, there's potential costs, right? A guy starts messing with the swing too much, mm -hmm. if he's ranked hundredth in the world, he could easily lose his job. So yeah. I think this is part of where the coach again is like, you're not just saying, okay, I'm following some sort of cheat sheet to try and like apply to a person. You gotta really be thoughtful, constructing the game plan, and then what tools you're gonna use for that person that's most appropriate to help them you know, reach whatever kind of place you're trying to get them to. How, how did that mindset evolve into the Golf Channel program? Um, because it had to have come out of a, a, a very, because I remember the very first time I ever see you, saw you speak, I'm like, okay, you've got a very academic nature to you. You're a thoughtful leader, you're a thoughtful, you're a learner, okay? You're gonna immerse yourself in a concept and then you're gonna look to the best way to describe it. So you teach. So when I look out to this audience, there's 500 people here that listen to what you have to say. You're an influencer. How did the Golf Channel platform, and who's the target market for the Golf Channel platform? That, that's a question that I was actually thinking more about. So it, it's funny because sometimes I get sort of labeled as this academic. Like I, you know, I taught 13 years just sort of traditional teaching before I ever did any like work in biomechanics or whatever. So for me, I'm, I'm fundamentally a roll up your sleeves, build a book at a driving range. That to me is my core as a teacher um, just being very pragmatic and then everything whether it be research or technology those are all tools to that very practical end game goal that I'm going for um, not like in above itself anything right just how can I help the how can I use those as tools to help a person get better and I think with the golf channel stuff you know for me it's like how how do I do something that would be fulfilling and interesting to me and then and then hopefully also with like an audience and I do like to learn I have an appreciation for all the great teachers and scientists and trainers that are out in the golf world right now. So, hey, let's go find them. You know, I, like the way I kind of pitched it was like, hey, think about Anthony Bourdain, kind of like going finding unique food <laughs> with a mixture of David Faraday kind of interviewing people, whatever, right? Like it sounds, it's an elevator pitch, but to me, at the end of the day, it, it's that. It's like, how do I kind of go on this path of still learning, still like, you know, really trying to like say, well, this guy, he's had success, why? And then take that to an audience at home, um, and then add my own stuff, kind of my own interpretation. Hopefully mm -hmm. I can kind of you know, maybe crystallize things in, in this sort of different way that resonates with people as well. Um, and I just think it's kind of a nice flow that I've had so far with all the guests. So it's been a lot of fun. Uh, with regards to the audience that it appeals to, you know, especially this season. So we're, we're going to do season two. We're doing it a little bit different this year where we're going to film it as like an hour and a half, just turn the cameras on, let me and whoever just roll and go deep if we want to. Go down those rabbit holes. Unabridged, un just yep. let it rip. Yep, yep. just yep. go. You know, a little bit of being conscientious of making sure that there's windows where it's not too kind of out there. Um, the reason for it is this, is that from that, that raw sort of whatever hour and a half footage, they'll cut it down to the 20 minutes mm -hmm. that goes on the Golf Channel. That'll be a little bit more of the, hey, turn it on. Not, not getting too crazy with things. Watch it. You can go out and get some tips to kind of practice on the range. So that's probably one population of people who want to get better at the golf. They're like, I don't care about all the craziness, the swing theory. Just give me something to help me get better at, my, at the game, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's going to be that format for it. And then they're going to put the longer version on GolfPass.com on the Perfect. streaming service. So for the people who like that deeper dive, they'll have that available as well. And that to me is, I, I'm super excited about this because. 
you know, I, I, there's so many things about instruction that I love. I love being able to go deep with another teacher or a PhD and just really talking golf swing, golf coaching philosophy, you know, everything that goes into like getting better. But then also love being a communicator and saying, hey, look, you know, the, the part of the, the fundamental aspects of communication is speaking a language that's going to resonate with your audience. Oh. And part of the audience is people who just want to get better and they don't care about the other stuff. So it gives me the opportunity, one, to do the deep dive as well as, as just communicate to, you know, maybe, I don't know what the numbers are, the demographics, but, you know, the, the general audience. Basically. Yeah, it, it makes sense because one of the things that I think is fascinating about your show and the ability is... I know that probably when the camera goes off and you guys are still standing around, there's some genius that gets discussed. Yeah. That's what I want. And I think this is where this year they're going to, yeah. that's going to actually, the cameras won't go off, right? Before yeah. it was like, cool, not really, the, you know, not really the format for the golf channel per se, at least in the, the sort of traditional one. But now they're just like, all right, let's go. I've told that to numerous instructors. You have the tools in front of you. Just an iPhone 11. Crazy. Just turn it on get a mic and talk to people mm -hmm. and then edit and tell the story you want to tell it's like people are always like, oh, i just don't want to get that stuff out and our our people who follow us our students they want to see that because it's the way that they connect and i think when i was talking about you being a teacher and an academician that's what i see as a communicator mm -hmm. you take complex information you make it relevant for people and easy mm -hmm. what do you and want? i think that communication like i don't think communication is just language right like a no. drill, like a drill. Yeah. Every time a good drill is a form of communication. So, for, so I taught this a couple of years ago. They were, they were from Japan, they spoke no English. It was such a great exercise in how do you communicate with someone without language. Yeah. And it was wild. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like all these different tools, showing someone an iPad and pointing to the club path number being super negative and just being like, it's got to go the other way a yeah, little bit. Yeah, That's yeah, communication, right? Yeah. It can be relatively simple. So, you know, anyways. What do you... I, I guess as we wrap up, because I know I want to get you back to being the MC and the, the dude, what do you want to leave the game with your footprint? Um, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I know you're too young and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, yeah I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, I know. I know. I do know this. I think golf instruction is an incredible medium, not just to get better at this game that we all love, but... I just see a lot of cool things come from it. Like the rapport that a student builds with their coach. You know, you almost become like a psychologist oftentimes. A thousand percent. Right? And it's just, I just think there's so many kind of answer and benefits that people get from just trying to improve something they love, partnering with a coach, knowing someone's in your corner caring. Yep. I think there's so many good teachers in the game right now. You know, when I was kind of cutting my teeth young as a teacher, it was a totally different, just, everything was just so different. And yeah. now you have this wave because of people like Butch Harmon and David Levitt or Chuck Cook, who've really kind of been like, wow, you can, you can make, make a nice living, make a great business out of this. And I think because of that, it's attracted a lot of talent, mm -hmm. a lot of very curious mind people, mind people are willing to work hard. And I just see the golf instruction space right now filled with incredibly talented people who care. So. For me, at least in this phase of my career, um, especially on the media side, there's still like the competitive side with like tour guys or whatever. But on the media side of it, it's really kind of trying to show people um, this aspect of golf instructor instruction, the talent that's out there that, that I kind of feel. You know what I've liked about you from the very beginning? Your philosophy is built around scratching your own itch. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that the most simple search? Yeah. I mean, people are so caught up in trying to be what other people want them to be, but if you just focus on what you, what you enjoy, there's probably a group of people who like it too. I yeah. mean, within the realm of normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get too far out there, but you get my point. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Uh, all right, I'm going to let you get back to MC, and thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. And make sure you check out Chris on the Golf Channel on Monday nights. Monday nights, 7 p.m. Yep. 7 p.m. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Perfect.